Today we're going to go uh, parts scrapping, scrap yarding, junk yarding. We're going to do those things for some parts for the Stormtrooper uh, just in case. So let's go. So we didn't do a lot of explaining in this video as to exactly what we were doing going to the junkyard. So we're gonna tell you right now. We have an engine, but we don't have an intake. There are a lot of possibilities for an intake, obviously, uh, but we wanted to at least have what we needed to, to do a, let's just say a completely stock build with a 97 Explorer. The only thing we we're missing was the intake, um, fuel rails, things like that, uh, the ECU, um, a wiring harness, those kind of things. So looking on eBay, looking on Facebook Marketplace, they want, most people want $300 or more just for the upper and lower intake. Uh, obviously I need a lot more parts than that and I can't find the harness by itself. Uh, so at this point I thought, well, I'm, I can either have it pulled by a junkyard. I found a guy uh, that will pull it for $500 for everything, which sounds like a great deal. I found a junkyard in Colorado Springs that just got a new 97 Explorer in their lot, um, and but they wouldn't tell me if anything had been pilfered on it. So uh, I thought we would go down there and go see if that has an intake wiring harness, uh, fuel injection system, uh, that whole thing. If it's on there, uh, looking at the prices um, would be less expensive than having this other guy pull it for $500. If I don't use it, then I can get more than my money back out of it, except that, you know, I spent some time on it. So that's what we're doing. All right, so back to pick apart. All right, let's pop this thing up and see what we got. Too short. Yep. Does that work? It's got what we need. Ooh. Well, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get busy pulling this thing. I have no idea what I'm doing but I imagine I'll just release a whole lot of bolts and yank some stuff out of here. This will be fun. Two and a half hours and we only got the upper intake off. So, we're just gonna keep going. I don't even know, look down in here. I don't even know where to stop. So I'm just gonna keep pulling stuff until I can't pull anything anymore. And that is how this is going to work. Fuel injection system. Fuel injection system is out. It's out. All right. Now, on to, I'm gonna actually cut the rest of the harness out while before I take the upper intake out, or the lower intake. Um, see if I can scavenge the harness from here. So that's what we're gonna do. You know what? I understand. My ex-wife wouldn't have stepped uh, one foot in the junkyard to help me. <laughs> She'd been she, here for a long she time. She likes this stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I need, I need this off of here, but how do you get it off? I don't break it. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. It is, it is. I'm missing one. Okay, don't break it, don't break it. No, piece of cake. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing off now. There we go. You can come all the way off. There you we are go. Gonna come all the way off. You are Good gonna job. come all the way off. What is in my way? Oh, we got a low battery. I say, I say, what is in my way? I say, it's that, it's that step in the back. I need a step break. Good to break in the back without breaking the cast iron. 
That would suck. Okay, I'm up in there. <laughs> okay, I'm either gonna break the intake or I'm gonna break the stud. Which one do you think? I would say let's break the stud. Let's don't make this for nothing. This, I'll take this out of the way. Come on. Be a man. Fight with this thing. I'm going to lose. I'm probably going to get some out of the truck. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. An all day adventure. And there is your lower intake. Right there. That is it. The rest of our pile. Okay, now just need. What do we need? A harness. Distributor. Okay. That's awesome. Alright, successful day at the uh, pickle park. We got the upper lower intake, fuel rails, uh, wiring, wiring. most of the wiring harness that I could get to. Uh, not including transmission arms, so we need to go through that. Fuse box, relays, all the relays. Uh, we got the injectors. We got all the coils and the, the coil uh, system, the electrical system, uh, and a distributor for $125. So, uh, well worth the wait. I was going to spend $500 and have somebody else pull it for me. Um, I'm glad I did not do that. So, we're going to throw this stuff in. Our spaghetti harness. A bunch of the harnesses we could scavenge on this trip. Only took seven hours. Yeah. Fuel rails with injectors. <laughs> Coil. Distributor. Upper intake, throttle body, ECU, and the math, distributor, more random parts. Not, not bad, not bad. Pull your stuff. Sorry we didn't vi video more of it, but man, what a pain in the butt. We were out here from about a little bit short of 10 o'clock until uh, right at five o'clock now, uh, just to pull this stuff. Um, but it was worth, it was worth it. It was well worth it. We're gonna get this thing cleaned up, get back inside, and then we'll go through our treasures. And we made it back to the garage. So at this point, um, I did this for a, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the option to do the 97 Explorer swap um, from start to finish on video would be something that I would be interested in because I can't find a series or set of videos that shows every step. Uh, there may be one out there, um, but, but I couldn't find it. So. That is uh, an option that I want to do, uh, possibly. Um, the second reason is the parts alone, I spent $125 for basically everything under the engine that wasn't including the block. So that includes fuel injection, that includes wiring harness, that includes upper and lower intake, um, and uh, fuse blocks, um, relay blocks, um, the whole thing. Still missing my uh, 4R70W um, wiring harness that I had to cut off to get everything out quick because they were closing. Uh, but I can go back and get that. I 
you know, it's going to be a pain in the butt and a dirty process, but I could probably get it. And I don't have the OBD2 port, but I, I will go back and get that one. That one shouldn't be as tough. So, um, but now I have a completely workable harness. And if I were to sell those parts individually, it would be more than $500. I would make two or three times the money that I spent to go get it. And so I'm happy with that. I'm content that I at least have the option to do that if that's what I want to do. Tips, if you're going to do this yourself, okay? First of all, get there early. Um, it is definitely a long process. I could probably do it in half the time now that I know what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, there, there are a couple of tips. First of all, you need to take a torque set with you because in order to get the plate off of the top that says uh, Ford V8 on it, uh, that has two bolts underneath it to take the upper intake off. If you don't take torx bits with you, you're going to go and drive and go get them. I didn't take torx bits with me. Mandy had to drive down to the Walmart while I was pulling some of the harness and grab a torx set. Um, second, almost all of the bolts in there are either a one half or a 10 millimeter. So Ford used both metric and standard. Uh, but I would say that 90% of the bolts that I took out were either a one half or a 10 millimeter. Uh, I did use eight millimeter on the harness bits and a flathead screwdriver uh, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, and then you're gonna need a pry bar or something, some kind of a long uh, screwdriver in order to get the lower intake off. Um, I did break one of the intake bolts uh, on the lower intake. Um, I thought I was gonna break four bolts. Uh, so I came out ahead. Uh, but that one bolt almost stripped on me and if it had stripped uh, the head off the bolt, um, I would have been screwed because I couldn't get the intake off. I would have had to try to hopefully break that bolt. Uh, but luckily I just broke the head off, which, ex which, ha which had the stud down in there and it was in the back. So I was able to leverage the intake up and break that, that bolt to get the, um, to get the intake off. So, so far so good. The wiring harness was probably one of the most difficult things to get out. Um, and if I had had another, I got there an hour later than it opened. If I had uh, gotten there at nine, I probably could have scavenged deeper down into the harness, like the starting, uh, the starting wire uh, that goes all the way down to the starter. I probably could have, I probably could have gone underneath there and undid it from the starter and pulled that whole long, really high gauge uh, copper out of there, um, and uh, and not had to redo that. But uh, I didn't have that much time, so I cut it. Couldn't get the transmission harness out, um, but you know we'll get those. So those are the tips. I have basically four options that I'm going to do using this block, and the cost associated with each one, and determine which one is best for me at this time. And uh, that will be the next episode. I don't have to go stick my head into a '97 Explorer again, so I'm very happy. I will see you in the next episode. Make sure you subscribe. Ring that notification bell so that when we do have another episode pop up, uh, you can uh, see it immediately. That's a wrap for My Point 3 Garage. I'll see you in the next video.